The Black Gold Curse Did you know Venezuela is the country with the most amount of oil in the world, even more than countries in the Middle East? How come Venezuela is doing so economically bad, with more than 5 million people fleeing the country due to poverty and hunger? Stay tuned, and I will tell you all about it. Welcome to the World Econ News. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification button to get updates and information about the latest international economic news items. Please allow me first to enlighten you about crude oil, the black gold of modern civilization, the driving engine that makes the world go round and round. Most people associate oil with energy production and transportation, but did you know that up to 40% of oil ends up in various key industries? The petrochemical industry uses crude oil as a raw material to make hundreds of very important products such as plastics, polyurethane, solvents, cement, asphalt, and thousands of other intermediate and end-user goods such as gels, toothpaste, tires, and medicine. I merely state this fact to highlight the immense importance of crude oil. You see, oil is not just refined to extract gasoline, but it's also a core component in the manufacturing sector. Here's an interesting fact. If the whole world switched to 100% clean renewable energy today, crude oil will still be a very hot commodity that drives markets and can make nations very rich. Okay, let's get into the main topic. When you hear oil, you probably think of Russia, Iraq, Iran, Canada, Kuwait, or Saudi Arabia, right? But did you know that the world's richest country in proven oil reserves is Venezuela? Yes, the historically poor and currently very poor and crisis-infested Bolivian Republic of Venezuela has more oil than some of the other major producers combined. Yet Venezuela has been poor for most of its modern history. One must wonder how and why that can be. There are four main factors causing this. The main factor is communism, the core values of communism to be exact. See, Venezuela never truly experimented with capitalism and free markets in any way. Its leaders in the past 100 years were either pure communists or hardcore socialists with strong communist tendencies. It's a well-known fact that communism is simply not compatible with the realities of the new interconnected and technologically advanced world. As for socialism, it's something that capitalism cannot exist without because some socialist aspects would be just far too inhumane, unfair, and filled with apathy. Another main factor that has been resulting in endless havoc and suffering in Venezuela is the lack of necessary knowledge and experience among its leaders in regard to how to run a country. The third factor that's affected the Venezuelan economy negatively in the past 20 years are the US sanctions. Before 2014, the US sanctions on Venezuela were limited, but all that changed when former US President Barack Obama slammed new sanctions in 2014 that crippled the abilities of all influential and powerful Venezuelan leaders of gathering international support and marketing the country's number one resource, oil. The total Venezuelan economic losses due to U.S. sanctions amount to about $130 billion. It's worth mentioning here that Venezuela also has the world's eighth proven reserves of natural gas. Now, do you want to hear something absurd? The USA continued to buy oil from Venezuela until mid-2019. <laughs> yep, the USA is funny that way. Meanwhile, experts predict imports in the near future will pick up again. Coming to the last factor, Russia might seem concerned with the well-being of the people of Venezuela, but the truth is far from that. Russia is also not that interested in playing war games and joining military exercises in the Caribbean Sea. Indeed, the truth is quite different from what you probably heard. In reality, Russia's interest in Venezuela is business, the business of oil and weapons. In the past 20 years, Venezuela purchased billions of dollars worth of Russian weapons and continues to do so. 
Right now, Venezuela's entire oil and gas mining, production operations, and the related infrastructure are contracted out to Russian oil and gas giants with their subsidies. The combination of the US sanctions, economic crisis, and bad leadership turned Venezuela into a fertile ground for Russian interests and profiteering. A fertile ground that Russia can only benefit from as long as the current status quo is maintained. The reality is also giving the current Venezuelan government the power to remain in power indefinitely. In 1999, Hugo Chavez became the president of Venezuela and remained in power until he died from cancer in 2013. Hugo Chavez had the best interest of the Venezuelan people at heart. He fought corruption and capitalism while technically speaking showering the people with the oil revenues. He also did some things that unintentionally led Venezuela to move backward and head for the worst crisis in its modern history. So what did he do wrong? He took Fidel Castro as a role model, which led him to focus solely on spreading the wealth while neglecting the due process necessary to secure a resilient, diverse, sustainable economy. He nationalized most of the country's major sectors and neglected the farming sector, which made the country have to rely heavily on importing most of its food needs. Sadly, the whole manufacturing sector began to vanish and the country became an exporter of pretty much everything. Let me give you one of my brief history lessons. Okay, in 1959, after a long history of military rule, Venezuela got its first civilian president with full powers and no military influence. Uh, well, sort of. For the next 30 years, power was transferred back and forth between only two parties. Unfortunately, this period of democratic rule did little to nothing to transform the oil-rich Venezuela into a developed progressive state due to one sole reason corruption. Yes, corruption was endemic and oil revenues were being stolen and ended up in the wrong pockets. In the mid-1990s, a teacher at the military academy of Venezuela called Hugo Chavez gained a reputation for being a charismatic critic of the widespread corruption in the government. He gained popularity, which led him to establish the clandestine leftist revolutionary Bolivian movement. In a very short time, Chavez became quite a big hit. In 1999, Hugo Chavez won the elections and became the president. As I told you, he did well because he cared about the people. However, his fascination with Fidel Castro's economic techniques later caused unprecedented, horrific consequences. His actions were leading to hyperinflation and economic chaos. It's safe to say that Chavez was far too self-righteous and didn't seek economic advice from the right people. All his economic strategies led Venezuela to remain hostage to the ups and downs in oil prices. Things were good during the Chavez era until the 2008-2009 global recession hit. It hit Venezuela extremely hard, and by 2010, the country was bankrupt due to low oil prices. The party was over, and everything went downhill from there. By 2013, the country was trading oil for food and medicine. Yet the Chavez government still resorted to the same old way of nationalization and easy temporary fixes. As a result, the people became angry and even hungry. They began to protest and the government responded with an iron fist. After Chavez died, the country gained a new president named Nicolas Maduro, who won the 2013 elections by a 1.6% margin, a figure that represents the level of division among the people. Some people believe that Maduro inherited a mess caused by Chavez, but the truth is far from that. Maduro was Chavez's right hand, and his role in creating the crisis should never be underestimated. Maduro suppressed all uprising by the people with excessive violence that resulted in thousands of deaths and the rise of corruption. He went as far as suppressing all political opponents and blackmailing the hungry poor to re-elect him in 2019, an election that was boycotted by the opposition parties. The number of Venezuelans who fled poverty, chaos, crime, and corruption over the past seven years exceeded five million. 
Poverty is prevalent, the healthcare system is in deep crisis, crime is widespread, and the government is merciless in dealing with opponents. The whole nation is literally living on food rations provided by the government. In conclusion, Venezuela has seen far too many ups and downs due to excessive reliance on oil revenues and lack of innovation. Its echelons of power are smeared with inexperienced, closed-minded leaders with communist tendencies. Experts agree that it will continue to suffer unless it accepts that the world needs its oil and gas more than it needs the world. It's up to its leaders to open their arms to the world and globalization while accepting some advice and recommendations from the world's superpower next door. Playing hardball and living in the dead dreams of a universal socialist utopia is a bad national and international policy for any nation, regardless of the amount of gas and oil it has. So that's it for this video. Farewell, be cool, stay freaking positive. And if you'd like to stay updated and informed about the latest international economic news topics, hit the subscribe and bell icons. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.